Welcome to Life According to Scripture, where the Word of God is alive, anointed, and geared toward developing, improving, and strengthening your relationship with the Lord. Our teachings aim to spiritually nurture both new believers and strengthen those who are already mature in their faith. We're grateful to have you join us in the study of the Word of God today. We pray that it penetrates your heart deeply, bringing you even closer to the Lord. Greetings, radio audience, in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, this is Minister Caroline Gothier coming to you live from Oasis of Faith Christian Center in Hesperia, California. One of the things that we talked about recently has to do with people having a difficult time letting go of the things of their past. People have great difficulty even after giving their life to the Lord, they have great difficulty in laying aside their past, especially if they've had a really troubled past. Now, even though scripture teaches them that Jesus has forgiven them and no longer holds their past against them, they continually hold it against themselves. In other words, they believe Jesus forgives them, but they have a difficulty forgiving themselves. When Israel's army were in terrible fear of the Philistine giant, we know as Goliath when we study the story of David, no one would stand up against him because of the great fear. Only one youngster, one teenager, one young man stood up and said, I'll take on this giant. Now, of course, we're talking about young David in 1 Samuel 17, 34 through 37. He began to relay the story of keeping his father's sheep and a lion or a bear came and attacked them. And he talked about how he said, I struck it and I killed it to save the lamb for my flock. So now fast forward in the life of David when he has a man killed in order to have an adulterous sinful affair with the man's wife. The Lord then sent a prophet and exposed that sin. And guess what? David repented. And guess what? God forgave him. But guess what had to happen? God did his part. What was his part? God's part was to forgive him when he asked for forgiveness. But you'll notice when you read the story that David had a part. What was David's part? David had to forgive David and practice what the Word of God teaches. And what is it that the Word of God teaches us regarding that? We see in Philippians 3, verses 13 and 14, that we're to forget those things which are behind and reach forth unto those things which are before or in the future that God has for us. If we don't forget those things of our past, if we don't let them go, there's no way that we can walk into the future that God has for our life. It also teaches us in Isaiah 43, verses 18 through 20, to forget the former things. So you see, Scripture is big on you forgetting those former things once you come into the family of God, once you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. It says, forget those former things. In other words, forget those sins you were involved in. Forget all the things you did wrong. Forget it, forget it, he says. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. It says, I'm going to do a new thing. This is what it says in Isaiah 43. It says, I'm going to do a new thing. Are you not going to be able to perceive it? Or will you not recognize it? Or will you not know it? Because your mind is so focused on your past. That's worth thinking about, beloved. When God wants to do something in your life, something new in your life, and you're blinded to it, you can't even see it because you're so hung up on what you used to be and what you used to do and how awful you used to be. 
This is why scripture is teaching us, forget those things that are behind. They're under the blood of Jesus and reach forward to the things. Focus on the future that God has for you. Hallelujah. Scripture teaches us in Psalm 63, verses 5 through 7. It says, My soul shall be satisfied, and my mouth shall praise God with joyful lips. When you focus on praising God, it's very difficult to stay focused on the negative things of your past. When you, when, I'm going to repeat that. It's worth repeating. When you focus on praising God, thanking God, giving him praise and thanks for what he's done in your life. When you're focused there, it's very difficult for you to stay focused on the negatives of your past. You cannot do them at the same time. It can't, you can't do it. When I remember you, Lord, I meditate on you and your word in the night reminding myself how you have helped me. It helps me. It helps with letting go of the negatives of my past. So when we give thought to the Lord, when we focus on the Lord and the praising of the Lord, it's, it's easier for us to let go of those negative things in the past. And Satan's not able to trip us up with it in our minds. We have to remember that there's a devil, beloved, and he's not your friend. He's there for your destruction. But the word of God is there for your instruction. I repeat that. The devil is there. He's not your friend. He's there for your destruction. But God's word is there for your instruction regarding living the life that God has for you. You'll only know it. You'll only be able to live it. You'll only be able to receive it through the word of God. John 10.10 10 teaches us that the devil comes to steal. This is how, listen, this is what we, how we recognize the personality of the devil himself in John 10.10. 10. It teaches us the devil comes. Now he's getting ready to give you the purpose that he's coming for. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now watch the rest of the verse. This is John 10, 10. But Jesus came to bring you life and life more abundantly. So what does that scripture mean for us? Whenever there is stealing, that's the work of the devil. Whenever there's killing, that's the work of the devil. Whenever there's destruction, that's the work of the devil. So when you see on TV people burning people's property, people breaking in the windows and breaking in people's businesses, when you look at that and you look at John 10.10, 10, you can see that's the work of the devil. That's not good. Hallelujah. That's the work of the devil himself. We recognize that this, these things, what things? Stealing, killing, and destroying things. These are the works of the devil himself. He uses people. He works through people to accomplish it, but that's the definition of his personality. So how does this look in our everyday life? When things are stolen, whether it's a person losing their mind. See, we don't think of that as stealing, but it is. When, when, when a person has had a sound mind their entire life, been able to remember, remember things their entire life, in particular Christians. And all of a sudden, someone says, because you reach a certain age, you have to lose your mind. That is not what Scripture says about you, beloved. Scripture says you have a sound mind. Scripture says you have a blessed memory. And it doesn't say it cuts off at a certain age. That's man. That's culture and tradition. And if you buy into it, you'll, that's the path that your life will take. Whether it's a person losing their mind, that's the work of the devil, stealing from them. We don't think of that as stealing, but it is stealing. He's stealing your healthy, strong mind. And worse than that, Scripture tells us, as believers, we have the mind of Christ. 
we have the mind of Christ. Then it says, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. So what is Satan stealing when, you, when they come at you with uh, dementia and Alzheimer's and those kinds of things? No, what does he do? He's stealing the mind of Christ from you if you're a believer. You, scripture says you have the mind of Christ and he's stealing the mind of Christ from you. You don't, let, you don't lay down and let that happen. You don't just accept that because some doctor said that. You, you go to the word of God and find out, what did God say about my mind? God said, I have the mind of Christ. God said, let them, this mind that's in Christ Jesus to operate in me the way it operates in Jesus. Hallelujah. So when you see someone destroying someone's property and something being stolen, uh, we know that's the work of the devil. He's using people, but it's the work of the devil. It's the description of his personality. Hallelujah. And we know that. How? How do we know that? We know that based in John 10:10. 10, 10, the thief, that's the devil. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Anybody stealing from you, that's of the devil. I don't care if it's your family or who it is. Anybody killing, committing murder, that's of the devil. Destruction of property, destruction of a life, destruction of anything in your life, that's of the devil. But Jesus came so you'd have the opposite. Hallelujah. Says it in that same verse. What's the opposite? Life and life more abundantly. Now you have to get in scripture to find out what does that mean? What does life abundantly mean? Because we have covenant promises in, in scripture that many Christians don't even know we have, don't even know belongs to us. And I always use the example, this one example, I, I use it all the time. And that is most Christians are like the person who has a million dollars in the bank and the, either they don't know that, that it's there, somebody has left it to them, or they don't have the uh, proper ID or paperwork to go and make a withdrawal on it, or they simply just don't know how to access it. And that's how the covenant promises of God are for many Christians. They don't even know that they have abundant life and a life more abundantly. This is what scripture says. So when, ne when the negative is, is, is removed from your past, you keep trying to, to dominate your thinking, you now realize the devil is the one that's doing that. He, he makes you think that it's you thinking these things, but he's the one behind it. When he's doing that, beloved, he's trying to steal from you God's blessing for your life your life more abundantly as described in John 10, 10. The main thing that I had to learn regarding this scripture was the thoughts that were going through my mind that, that were the opposite of me having life and having it more abundantly. The hardest thing for me to come to grips with was that those were not my thoughts. See, Satan shoots them through your mind and he makes you think that it's your thinking. It's not your thinking, it's him shooting those thoughts through your mind. And you have to know the word well enough to cast those thoughts down and replace them with the Lord, what the word of God tells us, hallelujah. That's why scripture teaches us in Romans 12, one and two, that we need to renew our minds. Why? Because they have so much decadent stuff in them. From the time of birth, things have been spoken into our ears and gone down inside of us that we don't even remember, but somebody spoke it over us. Somebody spoke it to us. But Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, we need to renew our minds, renew our thinking. How do we do that? We do that with the Word of God so that we will recognize even when the enemy is trying to steal from us. You will not recognize it without the Word of God, without the Holy Spirit. Now that's all the time we have for today, beloved. You can reach us in the United States at Oasis of Faith Christian Center, 17520 Lemon Street, Hesperia, California, 92345. In the United States, you can also reach us at lifescripture at gmail.com. Now until we come into your home again next week, I pray the blessing of God over your life and over your family. 
I thank you that you will take this word deep into your spirit and into your heart, that you will study it and meditate on it. And may God give thee increase.